Enjoy the journey. Subscribe to our videos and give us a huge thumbs up. of Jersey and stuff like that. And you're right, I did add two years because you know what, dude, I want you to think about this. As the hair brushes your face and lips, <laughs> everything that a human does in their hair, and we all know what I'm talking about, I've done it, that hair. <laughs> yeah, it's not with the poops, I just go from there. I want you to know something too, buddy. Everything you've done in your own hair, I too have done in your hair. Right? So why would you do that? <laughs> because I'm a man, you know? <laughs> I'm a grown adult married man. I do things. What the fuck? <laughs> what is the matter with you? It sounds like you see that in the mirror before you leave the house to convince yourself. <laughs> You're a man! You're a grown adult married man. You're a straight grown adult married man. If I say enough, I'll start to believe it. <laughs> yeah, you look, it was disgusting this week. This is the thing about this wig, okay? This is what you guys don't know about that wig. I had to grow my hair to 14 inches to, to get that wig professionally made. Couldn't get a single haircut the entire time. But, since it was a surprise for Murray and you guys, I couldn't tell anybody why I wasn't getting haircuts. <laughs> Which means you people just thought I looked like shit on television for two years. <laughs> and it was just my choice. I never got the credit. I suffered for my art, man. Yeah, I'll take it. I need it! Okay. We got the card tonight, please. I need it! You, you suffer for your art? Yeah. Do you think that's art right there? <laughs> <laughs> that's not art. That's, that's not art, no. That is the, that's the regional manager of Pac Sun right there. <laughs> Calabunga, dude! <laughs> Get this. The wig cost us $10,000 to make. Yeah. Ten grand, and the guy still couldn't get on the smell of pot and whiskey from Q's hair. Uh, yeah, it's true. It doesn't matter how much you spend on that wig. You ain't never getting the smell of pot out of that hair. I promise you people that. Also, thank you, degenerates. Also, <laughs> pot? <laughs> what are you, another color cop? <laughs> Freeze! Give me all your pot! <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't smoke. You, what do you call it? The reefer? Reefer. That's what you mean. Please keep saying it, yes. That's how you order. You go in and you say, I'll have one, one reefer, please. <laughs> I don't know. It, 
got so bad, Q looked so bad on TV that one night my mother called me up and she said, James, something's not right with Brian. So I told Sal Asar on Sunday next day, I said, Sal, something's not right with Brian. I knew what was happening, but I couldn't give it away, so I had to look right in his balls and be like, really? I think he's looked the best he's ever looked. All the time about you. He's always saying something's not right with her. <laughs> because we take photos, we, we love you guys. We'll take photos wherever, movies, whatever. You know what I mean? Do it all the time. Happy to do it. Because 99% of you were great. 1% of you, <sighs> fucked up. 1% <laughs> of you, when I go to take a picture with you, will like whisper my home address in my ear, you know, or jiggle my testicles. <laughs> Breathe on my neck, one woman did all three at the same time. I mean, weird stuff. I call you guys the one percenters, right? You guys know who you are, you're, you're freaks. Uh, it breaks my heart to know that I'm clearly in Christopher Lloyd's one percent now. Look at, look at the body language. <laughs> it's disgusting. So I had to get it back. And he got me back good. How many of you guys know that I write books? <laughs>
That's my 91-year-old abuela, right there. <laughs> do rent. That's how it goes. Look, next time look up the contents of Butterscotch before you go run in your goddamn mouth. Yeah. Hey, she's old enough to know better. Yes, yeah, she is old enough to know better. She's old enough to know everything. <laughs> she's running around town just shooting off at the mouth about hot candies. I know you survived the Great Depression, Lydia, but pull your head out of your ass. I'll keep Stevie Van Zandt you all night long. <laughs> We all think we get the worst punishments. I think I get the worst punishment. My punishment's so bad, we name this tour after it, right? The Drive, Drive, Drive Tour. You guys know what that punishment is or no? Yeah? So I'm here for those of you that don't know, I'll, I'll fill you in. It's a punishment on our show. At the end of the episode, I basically an Uber Eats driver for uh, these guys and Joe. Had to drive all around Manhattan traffic, getting them food for 11 and a half hours. That's not the worst part. The car was made up like a puppet show. Here are the puppets. That's the back seat. We got a full band back there. Yeah. Full band. And why do we have a band? Because they were playing a song, the same 30 second song, over and over again for 11 and a half hours. And the words to those songs are, drive, 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 drive. It feels so good. So good. <laughs> to be alive. Are we there yet? No. no. Are we there yet? No. Well then, it's one, two, three, four, five. Let's drive, drive, drive. It starts over and over and over again for 11 and a half hours. And I promise you people, Cleveland, I never took a break. I listened to that song the entire time. The statistics on that, because I crunched the numbers many times. <laughs> he listened to that song 1,302 times. Yeah. So, you will have a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which, by the way, is a CIA torture device called Sonic Acoustic Correction. That's where they like blast Barney until you give up the weapons of mass destruction. So we're actually like just torturing each other now for your amusement, straight up torture. And I get, I get these punishments, man. I get them that drive you insane. Let me tell you something. There's a short hop between drive, 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 and hour six where you're like, kill, kill, kill. You know what I mean? It gets bad out there. And this shit, man, I get these punishments. I get these punishments that take all day. I don't know why. I tell them I think they need a day off. And I get them like, like Pierre the Mine. They're like, we gotta handcuff someone to a mine for 24 hours. Let's give it to Q. I was, uh, I was storming the Capitol that day. <laughs> Shot that at the six, didn't it? <laughs> uh, or, uh, or um, Jesus, the, the Pepe, the camel in the zoo. Right? I'm living in the zoo for 12 hours. People are feeding me kibble. I was, uh, I was personalizing books that day. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I need a day off too, man. Let me tell you what was going on in my life while we filmed this punishment. Why I didn't want to be in that car, okay? You guys know my cat, Benjamin Cat? Yeah, right? He's like Black Cat we use on the show. He's in the torture cell. Here's a little picture of Benjamin Cat. Oh, Look at that cool oh, is. Don't lie to him. Don't say, aw. Oh. That looks like a demon come to life. No. That no. thing walks around the home while you sleep. Walks on my face. <laughs> yeah. All my cats are adorable. Check out, check out Brooklyn Cat. Oh, yeah, cute she is. Look at Chessie, Look at Chessie Cat. <laughs> How adorable this cat's are. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, some unfortunate good people. And I'm not going to stop playing that song until I feel that all of you are singing. That's right, people. I'm glad you found it so funny because it's your turn now. Put a duet on the puppets. <laughs> I told you I play with anyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, these are the actual puppets of Mark. Why don't we hit play and uh, do the bouncy ball? Let's hear him sing. Sure. at night in my bedroom when I close my eyes and I can't sleep because I hear the song. Kill the lights! Oh yeah! Now play the song and you people better sing or it'll never end! Drive, 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 drive. If you 
Joe says hi, by the way. We just played Joe Perry King Hall. I'm all fucked up, man. <laughs> outdoors to even show up at my wedding you had to be COVID tested and negative that very morning yeah which was an issue because when I took uh, my COVID test that morning it turned out I had COVID I, I was sick I couldn't go I wasn't at my first wedding right like my best friend's wedding yeah. which is horrible because I had already paid for the tux <laughs> $75.09 I'm never going to get back again I had to deduce that shit from his wedding gift but I felt bad. The duck. The deuce. Well, let, let's be honest. Let's be honest with them, okay? Truly, we didn't want to go to his wedding. Okay? <laughs> I didn't come to Cleveland to lie to you the people. We didn't want to go. Because of... Uh, you. <laughs> I mean, dude, tell me the truth. Look yeah. at me. You're telling me that when you got a positive, you weren't even a little bit relieved? <laughs> tell me. See? Home is always nice. New season of Emily in Paris had just come out, so you know. Stay la vie, you know. <laughs> I stayed home. We kept in touch all night though. I was texting off dates. Yeah, we were judging your wedding. We were judging it. I, I had to go. I mean, I, I, I'm lying to you if I didn't tell you that I was searching so long for COVID in my body. <laughs> <laughs> I put the Q-tip up and took it out the other night. Sure. I was like, God, a drop of COVID will do it. I had to go. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the wedding was mostly outdoors, obviously, right? But as a result, we had so many cool things. We had like our old lawn games, we had a chocolate fountain, we even had a bouncy castle the wedding. Yeah, yeah, Murray got married at a Chuck E. Cheese, everybody. <laughs> well, my thought was this, if you're forced to have an outdoor wedding, you might as well make it fun. How cool is that, right? Pretty cool. That's a great point. I, I came around on the bouncy. Do you like the bouncy castle? I came around on it, yeah. Did you? <laughs> Because need I remind you what you texted Q from my wedding? You said, this asshole got a bouncy castle. <laughs> just, just, just know this, he wasn't supposed to see these texts. Okay. But I saw their texts. Q, I, I particularly yeah. liked your response. It was very eloquent. All Q sent back was, you know, just that. My gif game is strong, Cleveland. It just is. Now look, 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 let me be clear, guys. I know, I know, that makes it look like I wanted that to happen at Murray's wedding. <laughs> Cheap joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is not even the weirdest thing at his wedding. I mean, tell, tell about the, the bridal suite. Oh, okay, so right after this, you go into the bridal suite, and uh, we're all there, right? And there's a little boy there, and I'm like, oh, the little ring boy is probably Murray's nephew. Maybe that's Murray's cousin. No! I found out, we all found out, in that moment, that is his new brother. <laughs> and he's six. <laughs> My brother-in-law, Jackson, is 38 years younger than me. Right? But you're missing the point, guys. For the first time in my life, I've got a brother. I've never had one before, and I've got a brother. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your brother needs help after poop, so it's not really a <laughs> Uh, that photo looks like it should be on America's Most Wanted, is all I'm saying. You know, <laughs> your brother, he looks like that little killer from Pet Cemetery that came back to life and started killing people. Yeah. This baby boy, this boy was born in season two. We were on TV before he was ever ejaculated in this <laughs> He is a super sweet kid, right? You tell me he was just lovely. Yeah, he adored him all night long. Yeah. You liked him? <laughs> you did? Yes. Because man. need I remind you that when Q texted you asking, is he a cool kid, you wrote back, huge dick, look! <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't supposed to see the text, so I told you that. But look at my hands. I know this could be a little risque of what we're talking about here. I just want to clarify, obviously by that I mean that uh, <laughs> the kid has a huge piece. Not that he's annoying. He's <laughs> Kid puts the hog in Hogwarts. Can we move on soon? Yes, yes. <laughs> he is a very sweet kid. I will prove it to you. So, uh, sadly, a few months ago, my mother passed away, right? She was this larger-than-life Sicilian mom from Staten Island. You're the character of the type, right? So my brother-in-law, Jackson, was obviously too young to come to the funeral. So, but he loved my mother, as we all did, and he wanted to record her message to say goodbye. And a week after the funeral, my mother-in-law plays me the voicemail from Jackson. And when I heard his message to my mom, my knees trembled, I fell to the ground with tears of laughter streaming down my face. 
and I immediately tested the message to Sal Q. It's the sweetest message you'll ever hear, right? But it also, at the exact same time, Cleveland is the most inadvertently hysterical message I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, I cannot get enough of it. And my favorite part is, like, your mother, had she heard it, would have found it hysterical. Would have loved it. Yeah. So guys, here's Jackson's goodbye message to my mom. Hi, Mrs. Murray. Well, it's me, Jack. I know I'm not going to be at your funeral or something, but you had good times. You had a good run. So, be good. Just stay safe. Don't worry. God will protect you. And I know you're not alive. Well, God tried his best to do all that. So, I really miss you and I love you. Bye. Come on! Come on! Hey, why don't we break that down? Let's start at the top. Here he goes. I know I'm not going to be at your funeral or something. <laughs> or something? You either go or you're not. Or something is everything else. He goes on. You had good times, you had a good run. You had a good run? What is my mom, the 95 Chicago Bulls? He goes on. Be good, just stay safe. Stay safe, stay safe. What's the problem with that? I mean, oh, that's right. She's dead, kid. Where was that advice a week ago? He goes on. Well, God tried his best to do on you. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite. I have a vision of Jesus <laughs> coming out of surgery. Just like... <laughs> I did everything I could. I just knew it was right. I could feel it was right all the way from my toes up to Q's hand, you know? And so I wanted this day to be the most special day of her life. So Cleveland, here's what I did. I booked Smash Mouth to close out the wedding. I'm not sure if you heard that, but as a surprise to Melissa and all our friends and family, I secretly booked legendary rock band Smash Mouth to play the wedding. They are Melissa's favorite band. Yeah, okay, what are you applauding? Not Smash Mouth. <laughs> they're not, they're nobody's favorite band. And how do you book Smash Mouth for a wedding anyway? What do you just look in a mirror and say their name three times and they appear? And how much does one pay a Smash Mouth for a, for a wedding? I hope you didn't pay more than $100. Because if you did, you overpaid. Oh, uh, right. so the wedding comes to an end, everyone goes out to take a photo on the lawn, right? Unbeknownst to them, I secretly converted the lawn to a stage there waiting for everyone with Smash Mouth. They start rocking, Moses' fat mouth drops open, she's in shock, our friends and family are in complete awe. It was the greatest moment of my life. Until I took a good close look at the lead singer of Smash Mouth. And I realized that he showed up at my wedding fucking drunk. Dude, drunk is an understatement. He should have been wearing two Magnificat Savant t-shirts. He walked in purple and just swaying. It was insane. He thought you could tell. Another thing he thought, he was so drunk, he didn't think that we would realize that he didn't know, I swear to you, a single syllable of any of his songs. He didn't know a syllable of his songs. The first thing he did when he walked out, he went, hey, somebody. <laughs> and then we sang. We sang. He just stood there for three minutes like the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> How do you not know the words to your own song? How do you not know the words to the one of those played out songs there ever was? You guys know the words. 
Somebody. Yeah, you know it. He fucking did it. <laughs> you guys are getting this as like a coherent story. You gotta imagine it from my point of view. I'm on my couch. I'm sick. My phone is going off like R2D2. Text from Sal saying things like, oh boy, Smash Mouth be drinking. <laughs> Near. I couldn't piece it together. I said, so what did I do? I paused Emily in Paris and I waited for more. <laughs> At one point in the middle of the set, he just stopped doing anything except gyrating his hips, doing like this drunk dance, I guess. It was like this. <laughs> do you know how long three minutes of that is? It's a couple of hours long. They played instrumental while he thrust his drunk crotch at us. I don't want to defend Smash Mouth, but I don't want to... Okay, that's how I dance when I'm drunk. <laughs> it is. It is. It can't be too harsh on me. That's me. I'm like, uh, 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 what's up, baby? I want to do on you. <laughs> that's me. My, my drunk dance is more like this. It's like... <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> Please, don't cheer. I'm a little age man. <laughs> Anyways, it's such a train wreck. I was like, I have to end this as quick as possible. I said, everyone, let's get together with the band and let's just take a group photo on the lawn, right? Too bad he faced the wrong fucking way! <laughs> oh, hi, Dr. Frank. <laughs> I'm surprised you guys recognize him with his clothes on. <laughs> surprised you did. <laughs> he kept coming and going off the stage whenever he wanted. There was times he wasn't there for minutes. One time he walked back on the stage, and I swear to you, he didn't realize it, but he picked up the mic upside down, and he was like... <laughs> we were looking at him like, he's joking, he's joking, and he wasn't. He kept talking, he didn't even hear his own voice coming out of the thing. And so we're like, your mic! Dude, your mic! I swear, he went, I'm Steve. <laughs> I'm Steve, Mike is the roadie. <laughs> He's like, your microphone! And then when he noticed, this is how he corrected me, he went, oh, anyway, let's get Merce Wife up here. That's another thing he did all night. He never mentioned Merce Wife's first name. He called her Merce Wife the entire night. They finally finished, and then they hit that last note. The entire band ran. Okay? He had no idea they left. And he's standing in the front like a rock god. And he goes, who wants more? <laughs> half the one was like, God, no. But the other half was like, God, yes. And he goes, who wants Zeppelin? And we were like, Zeppelin? He couldn't play Smash Mouth. <laughs> How's he gonna play Zeppelin? At this point, I'm in a full panic, right? I grab a microphone, I said, that's it, everybody. When the time's to go home, the wedding is over, folks. And then he says on the mic, the wedding is over when I say it's over. <laughs> he said that to him and us, and then he refused to get off the stage. Now I'm panicking. I go up to my best friend, Sal, looking for help, advice, anything. <laughs> and all he says to me is, let Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> I said, let go of that God. There's nothing you can do right now that the Lord won't settle himself tonight. So naturally, I turn to Q. I text Q for my own wedding. I say, I don't know what to do. And all Q sends back is that. Yeah. That was the uh, reefer speaking, for sure. But also, that's my advice for most of life's issues. So, go with God. Yeah? <laughs> At this point, Mer's wife, uh, Mer's wife, uh, Melissa. Melissa. <laughs> She gets visibly upset. Now we take our cues from the bride. That changes the whole tone immediately. And the crowd, the wedding people, start booing him, okay? And they're like, get off the stage, boy! And he was not prepared to, to manage that. And he was standing by the front of the stage, and I was standing right here, right near him. And everyone's booing him. And I think I was the only one who saw this. I saw him with his hand at his waist here. I saw him form a middle finger. And I was like, oh my god. And I watched him. I watched him thinking, he was like the kid. He was like, should I do it? <laughs> I saw it, and then he started to lift it up. And I was like, I have to do something. And I just went, no, smash mouth. <laughs> like he was a poodle that just took a shit on the carpet. I'm like, bang! And 
and he looked at me like, F you, and he just went, BAM! And he gave the entire wedding the middle finger. This is insane, people. I'm home. My phone at this point just explodes. Okay, I didn't know what to do when I saw this photo. I fucking, I put on my tux. I was so excited. I went outside, I started drop cooking like neighborhood kids. I drop kicked a kid over a fucking mountain. <laughs> That's what I did. That's how excited I was. Get this. We had to have security physically arm in arm throw a smash mouth out of my way. Yeah, I, I could have told you that was going to happen because there's that old saying, you don't pay smash mouth to play your wedding. <laughs> you pay smash mouth to leave your wedding when they're done. Here's the cap of the whole story. Days after my wedding, Smash Mouth broke up. True, 100% true. Check it out. Now think about that, Cleveland. What that means is that odds are high that a rock band we've all listened to our entire lives broke up because of my wedding! Isn't that the craziest shit you've ever heard in your life? Don't applaud! He got Misery Index canceled, now he got Smash Mouth canceled. Yeah, you can applaud the Smash Mouth part, that's fine with me. Here's the worst part. That night, we never got to say goodbye to the band for obvious reasons, and now, we'll never have the opportunity to. So Cleveland, here's what we did. We decided to record the band a goodbye message of our own. Hi, Smash Mouth. It's me, Jack. I know you're a rock band or something. You had good times, you had a good run. So, be good, just stay safe. And I heard that you broke up. Well, God tried his best to do on you. Bye. Yeah. I don't have many regrets in life, Cleveland, but faking COVID to avoid Murray's wedding is one of them. It sounds, it sounds off the chain, off the hook. We have, uh, we have one more very special video we want to show you tonight. Before we do, Ohio always comes out for us. You guys are the best fans in the whole country. We cannot thank you enough for being the Tigers. Absolutely, guys. It's, it's very special to be on a stage like this and tour the country like this. Not a lot of people get to do it, and uh, it's not lost on us. It's amazing every night. In the last two years of beer with COVID and Joe Lee, and we were like, should we continue this? You know, then we realized that we have a bond with you guys. We're still having a bond, and we said, let's do it. And we're here tonight because of you guys, and we love you very much. Thank you so much. Guys, we really love 99% of you. We can tell you that. 99% of you are great. Uh, we'd like to give a little special extra thank you to any military that are here tonight because we love you guys. Thank you for doing what you do. Keep us safe. We really appreciate that, guys. Thank you. We got uh, one more video we want to show you guys. I think you're going to like this one. I'll let you guys into something, okay? We think Murray. <laughs> we call him a creep ball. We think he's a creep. Okay? Oh. It's Murray. You know he's a creep too. He's not creep. He's not creep. He's not creep. But one time we were, we were joking around and we said, man, I wonder if we all tried. Who could be the creepiest out of us if we tried? And we just decided, not even on a TV show, we just decided to play a game with each other, okay? And the thing was, we each got to pick our own strategy of how we were going to be creepy. And then we competed, and we called it the creep off. Let's see how it ends up. Get in the van. You look like Willy Wonka fucked one of the Marx Brothers. Hannes?
Thank you.